Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. So today let's solve the maximum sub array. So given an integer nums, find the sub array with the largest sum and return its sum. So first a sub array should be a contiguous sub array. So all the elements need to be next to each other. So for example, we cannot have this element, this element and this element like in a detached way. So all the elements needs to be, they, they need to be in the same or like contiguous one next to the other. All right. So here from the example right here. So the maximum sum is six and six is coming from this sub array. So if we sum four plus minus one plus two plus one, the result will be six. So how can we reach this result? So first, the algorithm for this problem is called Cadane algorithm. So so it's called Cadane algorithm, as I mentioned before. So how the Cadane algorithm works. So like it's also mainly or like it's pretty similar to a sliding window technique. So the idea is to have our sliding window in this way. So what we will do first, we will first start with summing all the contiguous or the adjacent elements. So here I will first I will start with minus two. And then I will add minus one, minus three, and so and so forth. But when should I change the window? All right. So for example, here, so if I move to this element, when should I change the left, the left hand side? So first, let's see here, the in the problem, we want to return the maximum sub array, like we want to return the maximum sum for a sub array, right? So what we need to do here, so like, when we have a, a negative sum, so for example, if my sum is negative, so this means that even if I add other elements, so I have a risk or like I'm risking not having the best result. So what should I do in this case? When I have a negative sum, I should change the window. All right. So here we start with minus, we start with minus two. So here minus two is negative. So I will move to the next one and then I will start summing. So one is positive, so I can take it. I move to the next element one plus minus three. It will be minus two. So minus two is not a good result. So I will move my sliding window to this level. So then I have four plus minus one equals three. So it's still fine. And then plus two equals five plus one equals six. And so far, everything is fine. So now my maximum sum so far is six. Now I add minus five, I still have one. So like I'm not on this condition right here. And then I have I add four and I get five. So the maximum I got so far is in this window or in this sub array. So like the code is pretty easy. So even the problem itself, honestly, like I consider it as an easy problem because like all you need to do is just to check how you can implement this and just get the intuition behind it. So now, as I mentioned here, I will have a sum variable like this will track the sum so far. Also, I will have a max value or a max variable that will hold the max sum that I got as far as I go. And now when my sum is negative, so all I need to do is to reset my sum to zero. So in this case, we have here, we started with a minus two or a negative two. So negative two is like a negative value. So I need to reset it to zero and I calculate the max. So the max in the beginning, it will be zero, of course. Well, it should not be zero, but it should be, for example, let's say negative infinity. All right. Or like, yes. So let's put it to a negative infinity because here we see that we might have also negative numbers. So like we need to get the, the minimum for my sum right here. So if, for example, like I have negative infinity and then I get negative two, so negative two might be the max. All right. Uh, or like one or zero should can be the max. All right. So let's continue. So here, if my sum is negative, all I need to do is to reset my sum to zero. And then what I want to do, if I move my window and I get a positive sum. So in this case, my sum should become one. So I will delete this right here and my sum will become one. So like the max will be like, it will be the max. So I will just write it here between the max and the current sum itself. 
All right, so now in this case, I have one and then I move here. So like when I move here, I have a negative, I have a negative two. So when I have a negative two, so I'm at this condition. So I reset my sum to zero and my max is still one because negative two is less than one. So I keep continue on that level. So let's move our sliding window and continue our dry run. So now I have four. So four is positive and my max now will become four. And we move on to the next one. So here it will be three, but okay, it's fine. Like I do not need to go here. So I did not go below zero and my max will remain four. I move to the next one. I add the sum. So four plus two, uh, sorry, like three plus two equals five because here like we had um, we had four plus minus one, so it's three. And now I have f three plus two, which is five. So I will update my max to five. And also like I can keep track of my sum right here. So in the beginning we said it's four and then we said it's three and now it's five. All right, so let's continue the sum and then we add one. So my sum will become six right here and the max ca I can also update it to six. Then we move to the next one. So here we move here and my sum will become one. So I don't update the max and then I move to the next window. So the sum will become five here and the max will remain six since five is not greater than six. So for example, let's assume that this, this value here is six, for example, or seven. So in this case, we need to update the max since our sum will, will be greater than six. All right. So this is the idea behind this algorithm or behind this problem. Now let me walk you quickly through the solution and the code, which is pretty simple and pretty easy to, uh, or to implement. What if your code base could write its own tests, review itself before you even hit submit and document its releases all with just one CLI command. That's not magic. That's Kodo Gen CLI. As developers, we spend hours reviewing code, writing unit tests, fixing edge cases, and chasing down release notes. It's necessary, but let's be honest, it's not the fun part. And skipping those tests, that's how bugs make it to production. Kodo Gen CLI flips the script by bringing intelligent AI agents into your workflow, right from your terminal. Codogen CLI is an AI powered toolkit built for real life software development, not just toy projects. It helps you automate and streamline every stage of the software development lifecycle. Code review, test coverage, change logs, and more. Think of it as a configurable copilot, one that you control with custom agents tailored to your stack, your standards, and your tools. Now, let me highlight for you some features. First, we have code reviews. Run code review to generate clean pull request summaries, catch issues, suggest fixes, and even generate missing tests. And then test coverage. Use the code cover agent in your CI. It checks which parts of your pull request lack tests and then writes the tests for you. Real assertions, mocks, edge cases, all handled. Read his notes automatically generate markdown change logs and stakeholder summaries. Just set up the code release notes agent in GitHub actions. And finally, custom agents need something unique. Define your own agent using simple Tom L configuration, run them locally in CI or expose them are webhooks or APIs. Codogen works with all major LLMs, GPT-4, Claude and others. And you choose the model. You can integrate it into GitHub Actions, pre-commit hooks, or even trigger it with a simple commit like Kodo explain this. Seriously. And if you're enterprise focused, Kodo supports on-premise deployment, model guardrails, and zero vendor lock-in. Whether you're a solo developer or part of a big team, Kodo Gen CLI lets you shift left, ship faster, and sleep better. Install it with npm install minus g kodo slash gen. Log within Kodo login and try running your first agent in under 60 seconds. All right, so here, as I mentioned before, we will create first a variable and we will initialize it with the min value. And then I will have my sum that will hold the sum of 
the different elements and then I will loop over my nums and then if the sum is negative all I need to do is to reset my sum to zero and then I need always to keep calculating uh, the sum and of course the maximum will be always the max or like the max value between the max is itself or like the previous maximum and the current sum and then all I need to do is to return the max. So that was it for today's problem. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you liked the explanation. Don't forget to subscribe and share the video with your friends and see you in the next one.